Ready, ready, ready. Uh, so for your assignment, right, I haven't started marking yet because I need to finish another class assignment first, the exam on Monday. So I'll finish there and then I finish yours. Okay, yeah, we still have one more lecture to go before exam. Mm. Yeah, so for the exam, uh, please, pre please be prepared. Okay, please be prepared. So to prepare for your exam, right? Mm. I suggest you don't spend too many times on one question. Okay, so you just do whatever you can do first, and then come back to the question that you know. Okay, don't spend too many times on one question. Okay, yeah. So once you get so the, on the day of the exam, I'll give you like 10 minutes of reading times. Okay, so you read the paper, any question that you can ask or what. Then after 10 minutes, uh, we start the exam. Okay, you can start doing the exam for about, maybe I'll give until 1 hour 30 or 1 hour 40 like that. Okay, and then we'll finish the exam. Yeah, no. If you want to get a feeling on how the exam goes, I got a practice question. So you do it without answer. Then that is the exam situation. Okay. Okay. So the content is up to chapter 10 series, no partial purity. Forest series also have. Okay. Up to forest series. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in the meantime, you can do revision and then within the revision, try and figure out if you haven't figured out what topics to take. Okay. I think about half of you already approached me, but the rest haven't. Okay. Try and try and come up with one. And then after exam, I think you only have two more weeks left. 
for project one to view. Okay, so after exam, you should uh, send me a draft or anything. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Of course, you can uh, just submit without my, my checking. You can. Yeah? Uh, any question? Uh, uh, any question? Uh, project, man. Zhongyi, yeah. <laughs> 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 got two, I uh, got two projects. Uh, so first project, the length is like 1.5 pages to 3 pages. And then the second project is just uh, one page. The second project is just one page. About real life application. application yeah. Okay, so this is a, a graph or prime. Okay, if you consider the coordinate PP, okay, and then throw it in the polar coordinate, you get this graph or prime. Because people are interested in how prime being distributed. Okay, like two, three, five. 7, 11, 13, and then 17, 19. Okay, how far this number distribute? Okay, they try and figure out using this for lunch. Okay. This is just uh, something for fun. Okay, so let's do some uh, warm up question. Okay, let's do some warm up question here. Yeah, let's do one more question. So let me give you one function of two variable. Okay, let me give you one function of two variable here. Let me see the example. Okay, so let's give you this function here. So this function here is going from where to where? You recognize? To R2 to R, ah, because you can input two number X and Y and then output one number here. So can you guess what object is this? You should see the function ah, and then imagine what's the object. Not quite. Not quite, right? There's a lot of line here. Ah, this is a plane. Okay. How to imagine the line? Ah? How to imagine the line? Uh, how do you imagine the line? How do you get the line? You consider the level curve. Right? You consider a level curve. Okay. So you consider different k, right? Different k. So for example, um, zero equals to six minus three x minus two y, right? Two equals to six minus three x minus two y. Four equals to six minus three x. Minus 2y. You can also consider the negative value. Right? As long as k is in the range of f. Okay. So this k is in the range of So what are these lines? Okay, what are these lines? So I want to show you this picture here. So what are these lines? y equals to okay so let's just do one of them right let's do one of them so for this you will get y equals to 3 over 2 x and then negative 2 all right slope is negative 3 over 2 x and then how about y in the set? Five. <laughs> Plus seven or negative seven? Plus seven, huh? okay. Over two. Okay, good. Okay, and then uh, what happened? I think the number will decrease. Decrease. Huh? So for example, this one become three, 
and then this one become two, and this one become one. Okay. So if I draw this level curve, what is this? Okay, so um, y equals to minus three over two x is like this. Okay, so you shift all the way up to down, right? So you have y intercept. Let me use different color here. So y intercept here is maybe seven over two, right? And then you go down, become three, and then two. Three, two, and then one. Why not tell the little one? Let me do something else to copy this. Okay, seven over two, three. Two and then one. Okay. So what are the difference between this four line? They have different heights. Okay, they have different height. So the first line has height negative one. Okay, second line has height zero. Third line has height two, and then the fourth line has height four. Okay, so you can see that this line has height increasing from top to bottom. Okay, so how to imagine this picture here? Okay, how to imagine this picture? So, where does the graph of F leave? Still remember, where does the graph of F leave? Huh? So where is the graph of F leave in which space? Uh, three right again okay, because you need to add your core domain and domain together. Okay, so live in R3. Okay, so so you need to have a R3 R3 graph here. So here. Okay. Here. So let's say here is X and Y. Okay. X and Y is our domain, our core domain Z. Okay. So what happened to this line? Okay. So this line here actually get lifted up in the space. Okay, so for example, at, at z equals to four. Okay, where where is the line? The line is intersecting y at one. Okay, this one will be four. Okay, intersect at line at one. So uh, I should move it all the way up. Let me use another color. So use red. And here is the line, for example. So this line is leaving on the plane of z equals to four, for example. So here is the line of z equals to four. Okay. Confused or not? So you need to imagine in the three D sense. Okay, and then on the 3D sense, so for example, here is X, here is Y. Okay, here going up is Z. You need to go and find the Z equal to four plane. Okay, and then on this plane, the the K equals to four line is leaving on this plane. Okay, and then if you go down K equals to two, okay, that's another line. Okay, but this line here. Do I have two ruler or not? Okay, so if you can imagine you have a z equal to four plane, okay, you have this line, and then call it what? Uh, y equals to minus three over two x plus one, okay? And then if you go down a layer, z equals to two plane, you also have another line. Where's the line? The line is y equals to minus 3 over x plus 2, okay? But how does this different? So where is this the different? Where's the different? So the different here is the next layer line is to the right of the first line, okay? So meaning 
you have one line on this layer, you have, you have another line at the bottom layer to the right. Okay, you can imagine if you go down again, go down to k equals to zero, okay, you go to the left again, and then go to k equals to negative one, you go to the left again, okay? So you can imagine that all these lines join together become a plane. Okay. All these lines join together become a plane. So how you see the plane? You cut it at each time. Okay or not? So all together, it will become a, for example, a plane like this. Okay. So you cut it at every line, you'll get a line. Okay or not? Okay. So this is how you should imagine the level curve. Okay, and then after we got this uh, surface here, okay, what we want to do is we want to study the point on this surface. Okay, we want to study the point on this surface. Okay. We want to study points around the surface, inside the surface. And then later on, when we cover partial derivative, we'll study the direction of this uh, surface. Okay, for example, like this. The direction will be going down or up. Okay, so after we learn how to get the surface, we want to go into the surface. Okay, you need you should imagine yourself as a N walking around inside the surface. You cannot see far, but you just see one locally. Sure. Let's uh, go into what we have done last week, uh, last time. So last time we introduced the limit, concept of a limit. Okay. Can anyone explain what's a limit? Anyone to explain what's a limit is? So maybe let me write like something first. So limit. Anyone can uh, explain this notation here? Limit of f x equals to l. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. F x approach to l. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So when x go close to a point a, the f value of x also approach to l okay so but uh this is uh, one variable right okay so you can imagine it as a uh, multi-variable case for example we have uh, two variable okay we study last time so we can approach a point a b from different direction okay different direction in 2d okay so you should imagine the domain live in 2D, okay? How you approach a point, right? You imagine you are sitting on this round table, right? How you approach the middle point? You can go around the table and then go to this point. Or you can go straight, okay? Or you can go from different direction. So facing different direction to the middle point here, okay? Okay, so there's some property of uh, limit you need to take note here. Okay, so the limit of the sum of function is the sum of the limit. Familiar or not? Familiar or not? Familiar or not? Familiar or not? Maybe not. The sum of a Series, convergence series equals to the sum, uh, sum of the limit of both convergence series, right? Okay, let me write down first. So what I was trying to say. So, so recall last time we say what sum of a and b n again okay, equals to the sum of a n plus b n if the series of a and b and converge. Okay, so we know that uh, the limit of two function then 
we can compute the sum of the two functions. So let me write here. So limit of f plus g equals to lim f plus lim g. Okay, I, I omit the point. Uh, I omit the point. I just want to tell you that uh, this is the what first sentence says. Okay, the limit of the sum of function is the sum of the limit. Yeah, so this is like what? Again, it is. Yeah, looks linear. Okay, it looks linear. Okay, because you can break the sum. And then the limit of a uh, difference is the difference of the limit. So this one you look at f minus g. Okay, then you get lim f minus lim g. And the limit of a constant times the function is the constant times the limit function. So this is really a uh, linear operator. Okay, how is an operator? It takes function and then give you a number. Okay, this function and numbers and real numbers form vector spaces. Okay, they both form vector spaces. Okay, the limit of a product is a product of the limit. So limit of fg equals to uh, lim f times lim g. Okay. Similarly, we have portion. The limit of portion is the portion of the limit. So portion, if you want to divide, right, you want to divide. So you need to be careful. You cannot divide by zero. Okay. So you need to have a condition that your denom denominator is not zero. Of f over limit. Okay, and then the six, uh, six is, uh, I think it's obvious. Do you think it's obvious or not? So if I take a limit of a function x, okay, and I take the point from x, y to a, b, what should this limit be? X is a function. And then I am approaching the point a, b. So where does x approach? Uh, yeah, so I have a point, okay, x, y, approaching a fixed point a, b, okay? Where is my x coordinate approaching? A, right? Because I am approaching a, in particular, the x coordinate approaching a. So lim of x equals to a. Okay, if I approach to A, B. Similarly, if I look at my Y coordinate, where does my, my Y coordinate approach? B, right? Because I'm approaching to the point A, B. My Y value is approaching B, okay? The last one is constant, okay? Since every point, okay, in my domain, I will get the value of F constant. So no matter how you go, the x, the fx will still always be a constant. But very important are uh, these three examples. Looks trivial, but very important. Okay, and then, and then next is this uh, theorem here. So if f x y is a polynomial, then okay, the limit of f x y from x y to a b is just evaluate the polynomial at the point AB. Any idea why we can do this? Why can we evaluate? Always evaluate F and AB. Why can we always evaluate a polynomial at AB? And then Then, sure, but how are you so sure that F can take value on that point? Yes, because polynomial is always continuous. Yeah, because uh, polynomial is always continuous. Okay, because polynomial are built out by this X and Y. Okay, are building out by this X and Y. Okay, X and Y are continuous, so. Product of them are also continuous. 
So at one point, maybe you want to take note as product of continuous function as continuous. Okay, next is uh, if your fxy is rational function, okay, so you can write it as some polynomial divided by the other polynomial, then what you can do is you also can sub your AP into your P and Q to get the limits, provided the denominator is non-zero, okay, after you evaluate. And what happened? What happened if the denominator, the limit of denominator go to zero, okay? It doesn't need to equal to zero at that point, but limit to zero, okay? As long as QXY limit to zero at to point AB, then the whole limit doesn't exist. Okay, the whole limit doesn't exist. Okay, you don't need to get zero at that point for the denominator. You as just get the limit to be non-zero, uh, to be zero, then uh, the quotient limit won't exist. Okay. Yeah. So if you are interested, uh, you can try and prove this as well. Otherwise, we will just use the. Okay, let's try and use this uh, property. Okay. Are you guys okay with uh, what is polynomial? I haven't defined polynomial. You guys know what is polynomial? No. How about the rest? Okay. 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 So here there are two polynomials. Okay. So first of them is uh, x square y plus three y. The other one is a uh, Rational function, okay? A quotient of polynomial x squared plus y squared plus 1 over x squared minus y squared, okay? So, first one, uh, what's the limit of this uh, polynomial here? Okay. So, just now we say that polynomial is always, what's the property that polynomial has? Continuous, okay. Although we haven't uh, discussed why it's continuous, but uh, this is a fact. So x squared y plus 3y is continuous. So what can we do? We can just evaluate this uh, polynomial at the point that we want to find the limit, which is x equals to 1 and y equals to 2. So this is just a. Yeah, straightforward. Straightforward, okay. Next, how about this? Okay, this is a rational function. Okay, this is a rational function. So, rational function, what you need to take note? Okay, you need to take note about the denominator. Okay, you want to take note about the denominator. Okay, just now says what? Q, uh, so if your denominator is Q, X, Y, you need to make sure that Q evaluated at the point is non zero. Yeah, so let's check whether it is zero or non-zero in this case. So your know, my q is x squared minus y squared. Okay. So q a b is okay, q zero zero in this case is zero. So this means what? This means we can't quite use the formula to find the limit, okay, because Q A B is zero, okay, so we cannot choose. So then we want to ask whether the limit exists or not. Okay, we want to find whether it exists or not. Okay, you cannot find doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Ah, uh, you need to prove it doesn't exist. Okay, this is a very important point. Uh. You cannot find doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You don't know how to do, doesn't mean there's no solution. Okay, so you, if there's no solution, you need to prove that there's no solution. Okay, so we want to prove that whether it exists or not. Okay, but we have one root here, uh, one root. So if we can show these two conditions, okay, PXY is equal to some non zero limit and QXY is zero, then this limit doesn't exist. Okay, we can conclude. Okay, let's see if this uh, proposition works on our theorem. Okay, so let's compute what is the limit of x, y going to the origin okay, of my 
uh, numerator. Okay. I think this is just one, right? Zero square plus zero square plus one. Because this is a polynomial, right? I can just evaluate it because polynomial is continuous. How about uh, denominator function? This is also a this is also a polynomial. Okay, so I can evaluate it. So I also get zero square minus zero square, which is zero. Okay, so this satisfies the uh, theorem condition. So we can conclude that by theorem. The limit of x y go to zero zero of x square plus y square plus one over x square minus y square doesn't it's not like this. Okay, hey, here are very important now. You see, you have to make sure your pxy has non-zero limit here. What happens if it is zero? Top go to zero, bottom go to zero. What happens? Sorry, yeah. Okay, you can use that to check. Sure, you can use that to check. But what I want to say is, you cannot say anything about the original function. There's a lot of things can happen. There's a lot of things can happen. Depend on how fast they go to zero. Okay, yeah. There's a lot of things you can do if top and bottom both go to zero. Yeah. So you need to somehow think that how the top function is controlled by the bottom function. Limit, limit doesn't tell you how fast they go to zero. So when you combine these two, they will have some chemistry between them. Okay, so let's try another uh, example. Then we'll see more why we have to use those argument. Okay, so show that uh, fxy has no limit at the origin. Okay. okay, any idea how to show? Do you want to try the method we have just now? Check the limit of the numerator and denominator at the point zero zero. Okay. What's the limit of the numerator? Oh, the zero, zero. zero, right? But just now the theorem says we need an L that is non zero. Okay, so we cannot use anymore. Okay, we cannot use the theorem anymore. Okay, so what to do? Uh, seeing or idea now. How to show limit doesn't exist. No idea. So limit, uh, mm, we, we didn't prove in this course. Limit, our function is unique. Okay, limit is unique. You cannot approach to two different limits. Okay, you need to remember from the viewpoint of epsilon delta. Okay, because I want to make epsilon absolutely arbitrarily, arbitrarily close, okay, to the limit point. Okay, so if you have two limits, then which one you want to approach? Then okay, there's a gap there. So the limit is really unique. Okay. So if the limit is unique, okay, you need to approach it in different way. Okay. So last time we mentioned that to show that the function has no limit, you can pick two paths that give you the different limit. Okay. You can take two paths. Any path you want to take. So this part live in where? When you take x, y go to every, where, where does this number live? Where does this coordinate live? Living in the domain. Right? Living in the domain. Okay. My domain is R2. Okay. So what are the curves in R2? Two easy curves in R2. Like x axis, y axis. Okay. Why are they easy? Because what is x axis? What is the line x axis? Y goes to zero. Okay, what is the. It's not an asshole. Y axis. Okay, x axis. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, after <laughs> Obvious. So, x axis is y equals to zero. Okay. Y axis is x equals to zero. Okay. We can look at these two paths here. Okay. So, let's approach uh, zero, zero. Okay. Along the x axis first. Okay. X axis first. Okay. So, what happened? Okay. What happened here? So on this line, okay, on this line, what happened to my function? What happened to my function? Do you know what happened to my function? Along this line. My function become fx zero. All the point here is like x zero, zero, x zero. Okay. One zero, two zero, three zero, four zero, five zero. Okay, what, uh, what happened to my function here? My function simplified okay, to 1. Okay, in particular, if I want to check the point going from x, y to 0, 0 on the x axis, okay, my function just becomes uh, f uh, x, 0. Okay, uh, is it confusing? Or? Mm, I think we shouldn't write like this. So, I shouldn't write this notation. So, this notation says approach everywhere. Okay, I don't want to use this notation. Let's show this notation. Okay, so what should I write? So, if I approach 0, 0 along the x axis, okay, my function becomes a constant function. Mark. My function becomes a constant function, right? Okay. And if I take if I take uh, x go to zero, then f x zero is just going to one. Okay. Can Can understand? Okay. Because it is a constant function. Okay, no matter where I go, I always get one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then let's approach from another curve. Okay, try our luck. Try our luck. If we get the same limit, then uh, we cannot say anything. But if we get different limit, then uh, we can conclude. Right? Then we are done. So how about what happened? At x equals zero, okay. Point zero one zero two zero negative one zero hundred, okay. My function become minus y squared over y squared, which is minus one. Okay, so this means that my f zero y, okay, when I approach y equals to zero, the limit become minus one. Okay. Uh. So we can conclude that so since different half leads to the different limit, the uh, limit of the original function doesn't exist. Okay. So let's look at this uh, picture here. Mm, I think you can draw a nicer picture with 3D graphical online. Let's look at this picture here. So where's my x and y axis? Okay, so if I go along y axis, I should get negative one. Go along y axis, to get negative one. So here is y. Okay, put here. So here is y. Mm, if I go along x axis, I get positive one. So here is x. Okay. So you see. So how to read this? So if you let's say this is a y axis. Okay. If you go along x axis, you see. Sorry. This is y axis. If you go along y axis, okay. Just now we computed what? It is getting to negative one. So when you go get closer to the origin, origin is in the middle here. The y, the value of f x y is going to negative one. Okay, so I sink down. 
But if you approach from x-axis, okay, the fxy value go to what? Okay, so go up. So everything go up here. Everything go up here. Okay, if you go along x-axis, okay, the y value go to positive one. Okay. So you should imagine that this fxy is this function here. Uh, f equals to fxy. Xy equals to x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Okay, so this is the thing. And have I taught you a way of thinking of r squared go to r? So how should you think of this, right? So you should think of this as a graph f. Okay, graph f is living in r three. Okay, so how you should think of this? So you should think of this function as the core domain, I'm telling you how, okay, R2 is sitting inside R3, okay? I'm telling you how this plane, R2 is a plane, okay? How this plane sit inside R3 here, yeah. okay? What's the additional R doing? The additional R tells you the height of this plane, for example, like this, okay? The plane sit like this, okay? So how this can describe a mountain? How can this describe a mountain? Mountain is 3D, right? Okay. What we do is we just take the cover of the mountain. Okay. For example, you just put a cloth on the top on the mountain and then you take away the cloth. Right? This cloth is a function from R2 to R. Okay. So similarly, you can think of function R to R. Okay. R to R. Where does the R to R live? The graph of F is living in R2. Okay. So the domain is R. R is a line. Okay, so I tell you how the line sitting inside R2. Right, this is what we do in parametric curve, right? I draw the circle, unique circle, and then all the different parts. Okay, so these are lines. How does a line sitting inside R2? So now it's how does a plane sitting in uh, 3D, three dimensional plane. Okay, yeah, so. How does this uh, plane sitting inside R3? Okay, if you go along the x-axis, it increases in height. If you go along the y-axis to the origin, it decreases in height. Okay, so I sink down here and then go up in the y-axis. Okay, or not? Okay. Okay, so you should imagine this uh, point. Uh, you should imagine yourself when I take limit, you are walking along the limit. Okay, approaching which point? The origin. Okay, the origin. Okay. Yeah. Wait, uh, let me, let me, let me, actually, let me find a better picture. Let me find a better picture for you. Maybe this picture will be a uh, misleading. After this picture, we will take a break. Okay. Uh, if you try out the tutorial example, right, you can try and plot yourself as well, okay, when you do those questions. So then you got the idea why you're computing. You are not, you are not just compute some number, random number, okay. Yeah, wait, I... Great. Yeah, maybe this got some more color. Okay, you see? Then when you go along x axis, it goes to negative one. And then if you go along y axis, yeah, you go up. Okay, you see? A sheet of paper that gets folded. Yeah. yeah, so you see in the middle here. Actually, it should be empty uh, here. Yeah. Should be empty. They should leave out the space here because you never reach. You see, if this is really a straight line, right? This by like vertical test fail, right? But also on the origin, there shouldn't be some like, any point here. Okay, you cannot fill it with point, but they make it. Uh, fun. Okay. Okay. Uh, and see, wait, uh, let me turn to 
nicer angle. You can see the down, you can see the up. Okay. Any question? You see? Is it a roller? Can you understand? <laughs> no? No, understand. <laughs> which part you don't understand? Which part you don't understand? Which which part you think is weird? Oh, you think it's weird? <laughs> okay. Why? Why? Why do you think? So, okay. So, you should think that this uh, top one okay, is a value one here. Okay? It's a function of value one. And then the bottom one is negative one. Okay, just now what we have shown, what have we shown? What have we shown just now? So we say that if we approach the origin, okay, along the x-axis, okay, the add value approach one. Okay, so let's look here. So if we approach from x-axis, so let's find where is x-axis. So x-axis is here, okay? If you approach the origin, okay, then, then the f, Value is approaching one. Yeah. Actually, it's constant one. This is what we found just now. See? F x zero is constant one. See? On this uh, x axis, here is just one. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at certain path, right? So meaning, mm, meaning, you are looking at the fx y function on this x line here. Uh, I cannot do the animation for you. Mm, let me draw, draw. I, I will draw my, this example here. So if I approach on the. Hmm. Yeah, I think I swap this. I swap this. Along x axis, okay. Along x axis, my function is one. So this is the whole function. Okay, what do I do? I just look at the, uh, the line x axis. Okay, so this is a constant constant line. Okay. Okay. Mm, how do you imagine this? So maybe you can look at this like this again, okay? and then you just look at the axis. But so here, are constant. If you look at different part, if you look at different part, okay, meaning you cut it in different way, then your function will like increase, decrease. Okay, yeah. But on the axis, the function is a constant one. Mm. Okay. Question, question. Any question? Hmm. No question. Can this stand or not? Can. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, just now I draw it wrong, right? Because just now actually you computed, right? I'm sure you computed uh, fx0 is the function one, and then f0y is the negative one. So negative one is on the both, is at the bottom. Actually, this should be y. Because on this y axis, uh, you should have the value negative one here. Hmm. Yeah, just now I say it wrong. So swap. Just now we'll swap. Okay. Yeah. So how, how should I determine whether this is x or y? Okay, I look at what have I computed? What's the function I computed on this uh, line? Okay. Kevin, profession? No.
Okay. Okay. Sorry. Ah. Ah. What do you mean? Oh, for other pages, is it the limit exists? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you can uh, use. You can just compute using the theorem here. Just evaluate them. Yeah. And other places exist. Yeah, correct. Because you can see from this picture here, actually, it is continuous at other places. It's continuous. Okay. Okay. Uh. Any more? No more. Okay, let's take a break until uh, 205. Okay, we'll come back. Oh, you draft, huh? Okay, well, you you come out with can. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay. 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 就是一个放下的嘛嗯哼就是啊这样等于说我不是一点的我讲把它变成3D可以变到3D的诶可以可以的可以就是如果我用这个模式的 在做那个东西，那个东西要用Spherical，所以就是说你不只是一个圆形的，你是其实是个球体，你才可以去完整的东西。所以要讲一下，要讲，要讲，要讲，要讲，要讲，要讲，要讲，要讲，要讲，要
，那你也可以这样两个就刷完整个圆圈。你要你要两个，你要三个 variable 你才会进到 three D。你看，我要三个 variable 才会进到 three D。这个整个东西是一个 z。这个翻译是表示成一个嗯方向这样子，嗯，也是类似像高山地带这样子。就是我要的话，我这样写比较好，你说这样子的。嗯嗯嗯，嗯，你要给我一个这边的 angle， 然后你再给我这边 angle， 这样我就定了一个点在 three D 啊。嗯，好，多余。嗯，我们会动它这个是吧 ？OK， 都会动它。嗯嗯，对啊。I haven't even come back yet. <laughs> That's a lot of things. Don't serve you. Ah, poor panda. Poor panda. Are you guys nervous or not? Why is it? Ah, nervous or nervous? It's okay. Do more exercises, okay? Do more exercises. Go try all the tutorial questions yet? Not yet? Yeah. Uh, if you don't try, also have the Aiden. Aiden, I put some the solution better. They have similar questions you can read. But if you just read, uh, definitely it will be very hard for you to do on the spot. Uh. So you need to try. Again, try and then read, try and then read. Uh, one tip I can give you. Uh, so, my lecture notes and my assignment very important. Okay? My lecture note will contain what I want to focus on, and then my assignment will contain uh, what kind of concept I want you to grab. Okay? So, you have to uh, know what is every question in the assignment asking. Okay? What's the technique you need to learn? Then you need to bring those techniques into exam. Okay. Otherwise, uh, inside exam, you nervous uh, everything you forget. Right? Okay, so make sure you write inside your cheat sheet. Okay, you can refer. For the concept that you are not so sure about, write inside your cheat sheet. And okay? then you can refer. If you're nervous, uh, then you don't know what to do. That one is psychology. Uh. So you have to train your psychology. Do you have to come back yet? Uh? Too many things to buy. <laughs> okay, we start first. Okay. So let's evaluate the flowing limit if this exists or not. Let you spend about two minutes think about this. Okay. Can you try anything around on this function here? X Y square over X square over Y to the power four. Okay. And our point is at the origin. Can you evaluate this function at origin or not? No. Okay, you will get zero over zero. Okay. So maybe your first guess is like eh, maybe this limit might not exist. Right. If you guess that it's not existing, then what you should do? Find two path. Okay, that give you different limit. Okay, can you find two path or not? Okay. What are the easier path we can try? The x axis and the y axis. And you can try these two parts first. We okay, can see what you get. So, what happened when y equals 0? Sine x squared over 3x squared. Okay. So what is this? Sine x squared over x squared. Do you use no pita or not? Let's try it now. Let's try it right. So, so where do we want to approach? Approach zero zero 
along the x axis. So, what happened? What happened to my function? So what is fx0? Sine x squared over x squared. Okay. And then see what happens if I take this to x takes zero. Zero over zero. So you can do copy down, copy taru. So what happened if you do lopi taru? Hmm. X cosine. S squared over 6x. Okay. And then this is what? 3. 1 over 3. Okay. So this is one of the truth. And then I want to try another method and another curve. Which curve we want to try? So try y is this? Take x equals zero. X equals zero, what happened? Zero y equals to sine y square over two y square. Okay. Similar. Huh? Same limit of can you use anything or not? Okay. If you want to prove that it have limit at one over three, you need to try all part. Okay, now we need only try two part. Okay. If I want to show it doesn't exist, I need to pick two part that give me a different limit. Okay. So try another part. Okay. Huh? What 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 are you want to try? We can try. We can experience. Uh, experiment. X goes to Y. Y goes to X. Okay. Y goes to X. Okay. Let's try this. So this means these all these points are F X X or F Y Y. Okay. Okay. So this is what. Oh no wonder different. This is a different question. Okay. So F X X is what. So sine two X squared over six X squared. Okay, what is this? Use Lopita again, right? Same answer. Sure. Wait a, wait a, wait a, wait a. So let me check. So I'm going to go four x sine sine cos sorry, cos two x square over plus x. Hmm. Same. Okay. Then maybe we want to try to prove this is actually the limit, <laughs> right? So many half already the same. Huh? What do you mean general line equation? X, F, X, F, G, X. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Oh, uh, you mean uh, any linear line, right? Any linear we can try that y equals to mx plus c maybe not the plus c right because it's origin so i have to pass through all the origin so mx okay so meaning i try f x and mx okay so i test every every linear line okay not just m equals to one so i get sine of 2m square x square over 6m square x square. Okay. If I differentiate, do lock it down, right, do lock it down, then I will get 4m square x cos 2m square x square over this one is 12 m square x 
they still cancel, right? Okay. So, uh, this is just just one over three, is it? Yeah. Sorry, uh, what what do you say? Why is people not equal to buy Oh, okay, okay. So this one actually already wrong, right? This the, this one, this one wrong, right? Uh, why goes to X also wrong, right? Because I read this. Oh, this one is correct. Okay, this one is correct. Okay, the last one is wrong. Okay, so let's. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So we have when I move this away. So I have uh, okay. So actually it's two m squared plus one, is it? Hmm? Oh sorry. So m squared plus one. M squared plus one. Okay, good. So I got the m squared plus one here. Right now, this time. Bottom it. Eh? 3x squared. So it's 6. Wait, wait, let me check. 3. So it's 3 plus 3m squared. Time x squared. Correct? Okay. Okay. Good. So now we'll do Lopita again. Let's do Lopita. Uh -huh. So if you do log beta, I should run it right like this. Do log beta first. Uh, two m squared plus one. Okay. So do the same. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So m squared plus one of x squared over two times three times three m squared. Yeah, still the same thing. Hmm? Oh, you mean if I cancel out, is it? Let's keep X here. Oh, bottom of the disappear. Right, okay, good. Okay, so also left with three. Also left with three here. So I, I also get. Okay, then maybe we should prove that the limit is actually one over three. Really? Okay, so how to prove? No, nah, this one, like, wait, no, this is not all the line yet. Not all the line yet. Because I can spirally go into that. I can do random stuff like snake. Yeah, all part. Need to true for all parts. Okay. Not true for all directions. You have to true for all parts. Okay. All parts. Random parts. Okay. Yeah. Since I this, I don't have this example that I do before. So mm -hmm. <laughs> how to do this. You see, I have so many square here, so many square. X square, Y square, square, square plus square. Ah, uh, familiar. Circle? Circle. Can you write this in a polar form? Circle. So we can turn the coordinate, rectangular coordinate, into polar coordinate. Okay? We can uh, approach X, Y using r theta here okay so if i do the coordinate change what happened okay, let me write here so we're going to change change x y coordinate x y coordinate to a coordinate So, um, 
So our limit here will become r theta, okay, still going to zero. Yeah. Angle. Angle can be anything, actually. We just take radius to zero. Okay, we just get radius to zero. Okay, and then sine become sine r squared over three times squared. How what? How what? Same calculation appear again. Yeah, so we use. Lobitaro. I think we use Lobitaro. We get 2R cos R squared over 6R squared. Maybe we don't combine, actually, you see? If I don't combine, I know where my tree comes from. Okay, if I don't combine, I know where my tree comes from. Okay, once you combine, some information will loss. Okay, and then 2R cancel with 2R. And then we get one over three. Okay. So, what's the good point about this uh, rate, uh, this uh, polar form? So this polar form tells you what, no matter where you come from, okay, as long as your path uh, get close to the origin, okay, my limit is always going to be one over three. This is the same calculation what we do just now. Four calculation with it. It's a similar things. Cancel it. Cancel it. Okay. So. The polar form tells you everything. Okay. So the polar form, you can think of it. You use a circle, and then you look at the circle, and then string the circle down to origin. Get okay? all the path. You string all the path inside the circle down to the origin, and then they converge to one over three. Okay, now. Can you see this uh, two R canceling here? This is similar to all the four cases we met just now. Okay, so this is like a general generalization of uh, the path. Okay, regardless what path you take. Okay, as long as your path is approaching origin, okay, the limit will go to the same thing. Okay, you can see that there's no theta. Okay, controlling the limit here. As long as your radius gets smaller and smaller to the origin, you'll get the same calculation. Okay. Yeah. So we are correct. So if you try so many power limit, maybe you want to think with whether it converts or not. Okay. Any question about this? Question about this? Uh, how about I draw the picture for you to imagine uh, so that you know what I'm talking about? Let me move this guy. So, for me, uh, max should be really concrete. Okay, so I should be imagining, I should be able to imagine it. Okay, so how should I imagine this uh, limit here? Okay, so you study your domain. Okay, you study your domain x y. Okay, so what I do when I change to polar coordinate here, okay, what I do is I, I what, I look at the radius. Okay, getting to zero. Okay, I look at my radius getting to zero, approaching the origin. Okay, okay. and then. Why I do this? Because I want to look at all the possible possible path to the origin. You can do spiraling to the origin. As long as you are within this, okay, the limit of the radius going to zero, then you will get the same limit. This is what the calculation tells you. Okay. okay. So to be precise, right? You can write a zero plus here, okay? Because we are going from a positive a radius to zero. You can put zero plus. Okay? There's no negative. I mean, negative is equivalent to positive one with uh, by the polar coordinate. Okay. Okay. 
All right, let's go to the next one. And this one, okay, this one. So we can use similar technique here, right? We can use similar technique. Because if you sub zero, zero, you still get zero over zero. Okay, we can use similar technique here. So if I do polar change, what happened to my function? R cos theta times R sine theta. Okay. Over R squared. Uh, this time is different. The radius get cancelled. Right. So the, all the R get cancelled. You left with some, some trigger function here. Okay. But your limit is in terms of radius. So this is a constant radius function. Okay. So this means this is just cos theta sine theta. So what does this mean? What does this limit mean? If you put different theta, do you get different answer? Huh? For example, you put what? Theta equals to pi over huh? 3. Pi. Maybe just try pi equals 0 first, the obvious one. The limit is zero. Okay, sure. And then pi over pi over three. So what happened? Cos pi over three is what? Square root over two. Sine pi over three. Pi over two. Okay, as long as uh, as long as what? As long as you pick the point where both of them are non-zero, you will get non-zero. Okay? Pick any point when they are non-zero. Okay? Then you will find another non-zero limit. Okay? So this means what? This means different okay, different values of theta lead to different limit. Okay? So the limit doesn't exist. Okay, so the limit doesn't exist. Okay. Or the original limit doesn't exist. So what does this mean? So meaning if your path is approaching from okay, let me draw the plane for you again. So if my path is approaching in the last minute approaching at angle zero. Okay, the limit is zero. But let's say you approach from power tree. Where is power tree? So maybe let me plot up where is power tree. Maybe somewhere here. Okay. If my path is uh, approaching in power tree, okay, you can see that I can go wildly before I approach, and then I approach when I go close to origin. Then you get, for example, root three over four. So the limit along this blue path here, you get root 3 over 4. But if you take the purple path here, you will get 0. Not that, uh, not that you don't see the limit in this picture. Uh. Where's the limit? The limit is in the third axis. Okay, what I draw here is just path in the domain. Okay, the limit lives in the Third axis here. Okay. Okay, so you should imagine this is a plane sitting inside R3. Okay, plane sitting inside R3. Because it's a function from R2 to R. Okay, so far any question? No, no question. Okay, clear? Yeah. Okay, next. How about this? Okay, XY square over X square plus. Five to Try and think about it first. What do you want to try? Okay, if you sub zero zero, what happened? You also get zero over zero. Okay, so you cannot just use the polynomial continuity of polynomial. So we need to try different things. Yeah, let you try. 
breakfast. You want to try cola first, or you want to try different pub? You can try. Yeah, I'm trying, trying, We're trying some strategy you can use. Can you use normal assist, Y assist, X assist or not? Can you try Ola form or not? Uh huh. A cycle. Uh huh. 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 Uh as long as it's one to one. Maybe there's a coordinate that makes your function look nicer so that you can compute the limit easily. Like maybe you can just, for example, like what? It's plus y, y. So it's like you stretch your x direction. Searching the next direction. I like the process. I mean, you create a new set of variables, call it maybe W and Z, right? W, Z. W is X plus Y, Z is Y. Uh, uh, so it's the shear in your linear transformation. You stretch your rectangle. You can do a uh, one to one. Uh, but if you want to ask me a question, say, uh, if I don't use polynomial to show my limit as it's how to show, uh, then I cannot tell you. I can tell you, but uh, we need advanced two. We need the epsilon delta to show the limit as it's. If you cannot just sub number it, okay. We need to use the epsilon delta. So for this course, to find limit, you just sum. If you cannot find limit, find two paths that give you the different limit, different number. Okay. If you go higher later analysis, you want to show limit as this, then you need to use the epsilon delta. So you need to give the L, okay, take the difference between L and this function. Okay. And then solve delta for every epsilon. Hmm. Then you can prove the limit as this. Yeah, we need to recall the definition of epsilon delta. So in this course, you don't need to use epsilon delta. What you need to do is just rely on the continuity of point of something, 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 like number of Do I get zero over zero or, or not? Yeah. Okay. What have you tried? What have you done? Anyone try and look at the polar form again? Anyone try looking at the polar form? Huh? You look at the polar form? Okay, so let's look at the polar form first. I think some of you have tried. So what happened to my function? So my function become r cos theta times r sine theta squared over r cos theta squared plus sine theta to the power four. Okay. So if you simplify this, you get r cos theta sine square theta over cos square theta plus r square sine to the power four theta. You all get this? For those who have tried this, you get the same thing or not? 
There's an R square and the left of the cos square. But I think I cancelled it already. I cancel the extra R square. Yeah, I can put the extra R square. Same, okay? Then what do you do next? Take R to zero. Okay, take R to zero. Well, can we take R to zero? So let's take R to zero. That's cool. That's cool. Of this expression, actually. Take R to zero. What do you get? Zero over cos square theta plus zero. So you should get well, what? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So when uh, theta, so when, okay, if theta, okay, and Pi over two, what do you get? You get zero over zero. Okay, so what happened here? So you somehow pass by a point which is pi theta to pi over two. Okay, then this will give that cos theta to be zero. Okay. So the limit here doesn't quite work. Because there's in one direction here, you get zero. Of course, for the other direction, you get zero. But there's one direction here, you don't get exactly zero. You get zero over zero. So, this somehow gives you a hint. Huh? A, bit, a hint of what? <laughs> limit doesn't exist, no? Right. A hint of limit doesn't exist. Okay? This gives you a hint of. Uh, the limit doesn't exist. Okay, maybe this power two actually hint you some path that might go wrong. Correct or not? This give you some hint, right? If you go approaching along pi over two, then something might go wrong. So you might want to test that path, right? What path is with a pi over two? Ah, uh, why is this? Oh yeah, correct. Correct. Why is this? Okay, why is this? Uh, so how about let's try approaching why is this? So uh, let's approach zero zero along the one axis. Okay. So let's try why is this? So why is this is x equal to so let's check this uh, function here. F zero one. So what's this pointing? Okay, I don't want to put this location. I don't want to confuse. So what's this point here? Zero over y to the power four. Okay, which is zero? Okay. Okay. Zero or. Hmm. But this one cannot prove anything, right? You just try one path only. Okay, you should try different path. That's all. Okay. So you know that one path goes to zero. Is there any path that won't go to zero? Or not? Huh? So the normal path, which are the normal path you can try? Huh? Y axis and also x axis. Right. X axis you also can try. If you put x axis, is what? X axis is y equals to zero. No? If y equals zero, you also get zero over x squared. It's also zero. No? Mm. Again, zero. Is there any path that will give you a different limit? Or not? Mm. So you should think, can this portion here produce some Non-zero constant. Can or not? Hmm. 
If I'm both sides, where's the both side? Oh, up and down by x squared. Uh -huh. Okay, wait, 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 let's do it slowly. So x over y squared over x squared plus y squared over, you say you want to divide both ways x squared. So I get x squared over x over 1 plus x to the power 4 over x squared, and then? Power four. That's like a ratio. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the y squared over x will dot uh, r. You will use r cosine theta to represent the x, r sine theta to represent the y. <laughs> and you will get r, and r get close to zero. So the things go to zero. How oh, you want? You want to prove it? The limit goes to zero. Um, why? Does it work? I don't think it works. Huh? I don't think it works. I don't think it works, right? Because just now we already showed that there's some point that might go wrong. Right. But I mean, this, this, can you, this gives some hint that this number might be a constant at some curve. When? When x equals to y squared. When x equals to y squared. Okay, let's see what happens when we approach 0, 0 using, uh, using the line. Uh, x equals to y squared. What happened? Okay, so my curve become y square times y square over y square square plus y to the power 4. This is y to the power 4 over 2y to the power 4. And then from here, you get 1 over Okay, which is not equal to zero. Okay, so we have different half okay, that leads to different limit. Okay. So the limit, the limit of f of f when uh, limit of f approaching the origin as it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, some, some question is a bit tricky. Uh, okay, you need to find the right path. Okay, some question is quite tricky. Any question or not? So to show something is the limit doesn't exist, you need to find two paths where yeah, they give you a different limit. Okay? Take a look. Where? This page. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I tried changing the basis. Which one? This, 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 this. Okay, how do you mean by change basis? Y prime equals to y square. Maybe x. Well, I get the, I get r square below and r square cos theta side theta above. Wait, wait, so fx, so fx prime y prime is it? Become uh, x prime y prime over uh, over x prime square plus y prime square, is it? Yeah. yeah. And then? And then, I... oh, and then you would use this method. Yeah. 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 You can, you can. 
can or not? Wait, uh, let me think. Wait, I uh, whether can or not. Let me think. Uh, uh, seems like because this is not a one to one. Man. This is a one to one. It's not one to one, I guess. I think you will lost part of this function because your y is square. Yeah, you lost some part of the function. Yeah, kind of like restrict. Restrict the function. Ah, you only look at positive y part. But I mean, is it enough? I think it's enough also. Because positive part already don't exist the limit, then the whole thing doesn't exist. Oh, you can, 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 yeah, can. I think can, yeah, 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 sure, 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 can, you can, can, yes, yes, yes. But I mean, what I, my point is, if the positive part doesn't exist, surely the whole thing doesn't exist. But if it exists, then you cannot deduce anything, because you still have another part to check. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, should we? Let's keep this as a homework. Huh? <laughs> take a break. Finish already. Uh, last five minutes already. Let's just uh, finish up continuity and then we start partial derivative next lecture. Okay, yeah. This one left with, left with, left as a homework. And then uh, continuity. Okay, we finish up continuity, then uh, we finish. Let's start with the partial derivative. So, mm, what is continuity? I already actually hinted to you last time already. So, if I have a limit okay, at the point AB, and my function have a value at that point, okay, FAB, and FAB equals to L, then my function is continuous at AB. Okay, so there are three steps here. So my function have a limit L at AB, and then my function can evaluate at AB, FAB. So I got L, I got FAB. Okay. If FAB and L equal, then my function is continuous. Yeah. So the picture is like this. So a very standard picture like this, you should remember. You have a line and then you take it away, take one point away. So I have a limit at this point, right? It's actually this. Dot here. And my function also has a point on on top of the origin. Let's say this point is origin. Okay. Then if this point, okay, if f0, okay, f0 is equal to the limit here, okay, then it is continuous. If not, then it's not continuous. Okay. So limit doesn't equal to the value here, then it is not continuous. Okay, okay seeing, is this uh, function continuous or not? Why? Why? Remember, I, I always like to ask why one. True or false, I want to ask why. So you have to prepare why. What? <laughs> <laughs> At the origin, the limit doesn't equal to the value of f. Okay. Yeah. See, do you see her whole year or not? You can't have the tone mark. Okay, the tone is saying that this is not continuous. Yeah. But both the tone you get here. Of R not so they have to continuous. What? What? Okay, uh, okay. And then uh, next, uh, how to build comp uh, continuous function? So if you have two continuous function, you compose them together, they are still continuous. So okay, you can build uh, a lot of uh, continuous function. So what are the example of continuous function? Uh? Let's remind ourselves. So first is the polynomial. Just now we mentioned about it already. And then also the rational. Okay, you can divide your polynomial at the point where it defines. Okay, make sure you don't have zero in your denominator. And then what else? You also can take exponential function, for example. 
exponential function. Uh, logarithm function also continuous, but at a restricted domain. Okay, not the whole R. Right. Log, log already defined where x is greater than zero and it's continuous then. Okay, so you make sure uh, you use the right domain to see where is the continuous. So for example, okay, where does this uh, function continuous? Okay, so the first one is a rational function, right? So you need to make sure that the, your denominator is non-zero. Okay, so you cannot have uh, y, uh, you cannot have y equals to 4x squared. Okay, so meaning what? So this guy is uh, not continuous along this y equals to 4x squared here. Okay, so this is the domain feature. Okay, away from this point is continuous. Away from this point is continuous. And or not? Understand? Understand? At y equals to 4 squared, what happened? It's zero, right? You know, right? Yeah. Undefined. Okay, but away from this point, uh, this function is defined and then continuous. Using the uh, theorem just now, how to evaluate the limit? You just sub the value of your. Yeah, just sub the value of your point at every point outside here. Okay, at every point. You just sub value. Okay, so for example, how to find the limit to one zero? Okay, limit of x, x, y to one zero. What do you do? You just sub the value in. Okay, so like two times one plus three times zero over zero minus four times one. And then this will give you a number, which, which is minus one root. Oh, zero, 0100. Okay, since I picked the wrong point, so let's uh, move this uh, one zero down. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's move it down. <laughs> okay, check this one. <laughs> it's the same, it's the same. It's the same, same thing. <laughs> same words. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, how about the last one? Okay, last one. Uh, this. So is this continuous or not? Why? This is a composite of continuous function. Okay, you have a polynomial and then you compose with trigger function. So trigger is continuous and then polynomial is continuous at every point. Okay, so this is a composition. So the uh, conclusion is being a composite function, okay, composite function of continuous function, okay, this function. On R2, F is continuous. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will love, let this uh, last exercise to the next time. Okay. When we start the class, we'll try and do this together. Okay. If no question, we'll finish today and then see you on Tuesday. Uh, please start and do your cheat sheet and don't let to last minute.